15 killings per day. After these major prayer events, united prayer events were going on, that's when we started seeing the results. And 10 days later, the first drug lord fell, and God was changing the city. Encouraged by the spiritual momentum generated by the first all-night prayer vigil, church leaders decided to rent the largest venue in the city, the 55,000-seat Pascual Guerrero Soccer Stadium. Their faith was amply rewarded when more than 60,000 believers showed up to pray and worship across denominational lines. During the summer of 1995, the Colombian government declared all-out war against the drug lords. 6,500 elite commandos were dispatched to Cali with explicit orders to round up the cartel's ringleaders. There were seven uh, top drug lords, six, had fallen in those nine months when we really started praying together. The whole spiritual atmosphere of the city of Cali has changed. While Julio was encouraged by God's handiwork, he faced opposition in his own backyard. A neighbor, angry over disputed property rights, threatened to kill him. So Julio said, I'm going to fast and pray until I know what's happening. So he was fasting, and on the third day, God spoke to him, and he said, he will do you great damage. But from what he does, the revival in Cali will spring forth. I want to tell you people, this is a very dangerous thing that we're doing here tonight. He had a meeting with the Pastors Association, the board, I was waiting for him with the other pastors at 2 o'clock that afternoon. He told us to drop him off. The chauffeur kept saying, no, let me take you to the door, let me wait with you. But I said, no, just, just leave me here, I can walk. He got out, he started walking towards the church. Two hitmen were waiting in ambush for him. That was the last time I saw him. I got a call and they said, they just killed Julio. And I said, nah, how can they kill a pastor? So I went to the place thinking he was just hurt. But when I got there, he was lying on his side like a baby. Julio, the noisy one, the active one, the man who just never sat still, there he was lying like a baby. When they first told me about it, it's, you're in shock. You can't believe it really happened. And as I arrived, his body was still on the street. There was a pool of blood by his head where he had been shot. The verse that came to me just by the Spirit of God was precious in the eyes of the Lord are the death of the saints. And as I just stepped out and sat next to his body, I knew I was on holy ground. And I just said, Lord, I know that you know everything in our hearts, but this I have to say, it is well with my soul. This is what you wanted, and it's well with my soul. In shock and struggling to understand God's purposes in this tragedy, hundreds of Christians gathered at Julio's funeral, including many pastors who had not even been speaking to each other. And all the pastors came forward and we embraced each other and we made a covenant of unity saying that we would not let things get between us. Today, this covenant of unity extends to some 200 pastors and serves as the backbone of the city's high-profile prayer vigils. It has led to an absolute transformation of this city. Corruption has been reduced dramatically. The, the cocaine drug cartels have been shattered in this city. There are about 60,000 people and they've come here to spend the entire night praying that God would continue the marvelous work he has been doing in this city for 36 consecutive months. While thousands of exuberant worshipers lit up the inside of the stadium, Staff security was forced to turn away an additional 15,000 participants at the gate. Undaunted, 
the latecomers formed an impromptu praise march that circled the stadium for hours. What you're seeing here today in this stadium is, is a miracle. Uh, you know that some years ago it would have been impossible for evangelicals to gather like this, but, but God is raising up His church. Hallelujah. And, and we're going to meet that need in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is what's happening Hallelujah. today in Colombia. This is something that pastors and intercessors in the United States, in Europe, all over the world need to witness. This is what God is doing in our day. And we can see that God's your friend, a mighty river through the nation, and young and old will turn to Jesus. As the kingdom of God has descended upon Cali, many prominent citizens have come into relationship with Christ. Rafael Arajo Gámez is Colombia's leading sports commentator. For years, he's broadcast championship soccer matches from the stadium. I am here today because six months ago, I came to know Jesus, and I accepted him as my savior. I have been worshiping him and praising him ever since. How does the excitement of what's going on in the Vigilia compared to the soccer matches. There is no comparison. With the soccer games, it's just a lot of yelling and screaming. Here you enjoy it from the heart. Are you a pretty happy man the last six months? Usted es un hombre bien feliz en esos últimos seis meses? Yes, diferente, gozoso. Muy enjoyed. Muy gozoso. Very different. I have been changed. I am very joyful. Joyful. It's a different life. <laughs> Mario Hinete is a prominent attorney and motivational speaker whose radio program is heard throughout Latin America. After searching for peace in various New Age and self-help organizations, he finally came home to Christ. From that moment on, I started to find a real peace inside of me. I definitely believe that even though I'm a spiritual baby, the answer is here in the Bible. I feel I lost 41 years of my life, but I know now that God has a plan for me. Mario's new passion is to learn the ways of God and serve Him through the media. I understand that God is saying to me, it's not the way you want it, it's the way I want it. And I say, yes, so be it, Lord. It's what you want, but use me. I want to serve you. For the unsaved people, all of a sudden, they're coming to the place, hey, oh, what do we have here? Where are we going? What hope is there? There's corruption here. There's fraud there. There's every place they look, there's, it's always coming up to a dead end. And all of a sudden, they're saying, there's got to be an answer. There's got to be an answer. And, and you combine that with the church saying, there is an answer. There is an answer. And you've got an explosion coming. Even city officials acknowledge the positive effects of the gospel. The government officials were saying to the president of the Pastors Association, hey, listen, you know, we, we need more of you guys uh, in the government. We need honest people like you guys. And the mayor had said, I can't charge you for, for using the stadium because you're doing us a favor. So now they're looking at the church like we are bringing something positive. When local churches wanted to offer a spiritual alternative to Cali's traditional fare, a 10-day event usually accompanied by drunken debauchery, city officials agreed. Not only would they give the Christians rent-free use of the 22,000-seat velodrome, they would also pay for the advertising, sound support, and security. This new openness to the gospel is affecting all levels of society. Nowadays, it is no longer viewed as strange to have the Lord in our daily lives. Upper-class people are accepting that Jesus is a need in their lives, and they don't view it as something ridiculous, because before they thought it was a joke. That was the worst thing that you could bring up in a conversation. Nowadays, you can speak about God, and everybody will respect it and is interested. Explosive church growth is happening all over the city, across denominational lines. Ask pastors to define their strategy and they say, we don't have time to plan. We're too busy pulling the nets into the boat. And the numbers are growing. One church hosts more than 35,000 people. 
They can't all fit all at 